following 10 steps are a proven method of how to fail in engineering and how to fail miserably. And if your goal is to fail in engineering and absolutely make the least out of your time and energy. Now towards the end, I will reverse them so I can tell you 10 things you can actually do to succeed and not fail because I don't want you to fail. But if you want to fail, here's what you should do. One, choose an engineering major that you don't like. You know, just look down the list of engineering majors and just pick one and just be like, okay, this one I don't even seem to be interested in, but oh well, the whole point of college is to get a job, right? So just pick anything. I'm sure that's gonna turn out to be fun. Which is a nice segue into the second way you can fail in engineering is don't switch your major once you realize that you absolutely hate your major. You know, just say, oh, but I already spent one semester in this major, even though I really don't like it and I don't want to lose time. And basically spend the next 50, 60, 100 years, however, you plan on living of your life just doing that career because you only you don't want to sacrifice like one semester or one year when you realize you really, really don't want to do this thing. All right, third way to fail in engineering is um, wait till last minute, like senior year or whatever to think about internships or jobs like or ideally don't even think about that. Just wait till graduation and then figure it out. Just wing it, you know, like spend your summers doing absolutely nothing. Like don't even try to find an internship. And if you cannot find an internship, don't even bother trying to find a project or learning a skill. And in some cases, if you choose to like absolutely relax and recharge, that's okay. But I'm being very realistic here. If you want to fail in engineering, just totally ignore internships. All right, fourth way to fail in engineering is do not approach any people. Do not try to make friends. Do not try to form study groups and just try to do everything on your own. You can do everything on your own. You know, it sounds like a really good idea to tackle this very challenging thing you've never done before on your own. Now, if you want to go the extra mile in failing at this specific step, just tell yourself I'm an introvert, so I just can't talk to people and that's just who I am and there's no other way around that. Like just make it a belief and like an identity thing where you just cannot approach people and totally ignore the fact that it is a scale and it's a spectrum, it's not binary where some people are more extroverted, some people are less introverted. And you could get yourself to be a little more extroverted and ask people and join groups and whatnot. But yeah, how about like, just don't do that. Just say, oh, I, yeah, too bad. I can't really do that. I'm not even gonna bother trying to build that skill. It's probably a good way to fail. All right, fifth way to fail in engineering is like, don't critically think when it comes to your own time management. Like just attend every lecture for the sake of attending, even though like you're not learning anything from that specific lecture and attendance not even required. And you could totally teach yourself much more efficiently from a book or from studying with friends. But don't even like think about that. Just kind of get like a schedule handed to you and just kind of follow it and cruise by. Don't even think, don't even bother about your goals. Like just don't think along the way, just like turn your brain off and just kind of cruise by and do what everybody else is doing, which sometimes can be good. But most of the time, it's best to just like think on your own, I would say. But if your goal is to fail, don't do that. All right, sixth way to fail in engineering, and I love this one, focus only on grades and don't build any real world skills, you know? Just get a really nice GPA and have that be like the only thing on your resume. Don't get involved in any clubs, don't get involved in any projects, don't work on anything, don't learn how to program, don't learn how to design circuits, don't learn how to do anything tangible that is useful in the real world, and just get really good at like increasing your GPA. I'm pretty sure companies in the US would love that. Which brings me to the seventh way to fail is just don't get engaged in any projects or societies or anything. Just don't do anything outside of class, you know, just only go to the class, do the assignments, do the class projects, go home and do nothing. Don't do anything outside of class. Don't do anything extracurricular. That's a pretty good way to fail. Eighth way to fail is blame professors and professor accents as much as you want. Spending a lot of time and energy blaming the professor's accent and blaming the professor's inability to teach is gonna take away a lot from your time and energy, which you could be spending doing other things that are more useful. And that's definitely gonna help you fail. Now, don't get me wrong, in an ideal world, all professors would be excellent communicators and all professors would prioritize teaching, but that's just not the reality of the world we live in. The world we live in, most institutions will prioritize research and the professors just happen to teach on the side and either they don't care about the teaching as much or if they're like an international professor, they just simply don't have the ability to speak in the accent that you would like. And again, because I'm a realist, I could complain about that all, you could complain about that all day or you could just move on and go figure out other ways to learn and actually use that as an advantage to think, okay, this is helping me learn the skill of independent learning. But if your goal is to fail, just blame the professors, blame the TAs. Don't learn the skill of learning things on your own, just move on. All right, ninth way to fail in engineering. And I guess this is like failing at being good in engineering. You could still be an engineer, but in my opinion, you need creativity and why not to be a really good engineer is focus only on engineering and like ignore everything else, right? Like ignore any other outside inspirations, ignore liberal arts, ignore hobbies, friends, don't read any books, don't watch any movies, just don't get any outside inspirations. 
and just kind of box yourself into this like very technical engineering environment. And yes, even though that would probably help you be good at engineering or like being good at like doing specific things, uh, just completely getting rid of your creativity like that. It's probably not good if you want to enjoy engineering, especially if you do something design oriented, you probably need inspirations from things that are outside of engineering. 10th way, if you want to fail in engineering, and I love this one is focus only on tactics and ignore principles, ignore mindset. And what I mean by that is if you really want to fail at engineering, just try to figure out like the little hack that's gonna get you a Google internship or the little hack that's gonna get you a job at Facebook or whatever, or just keep searching for hacks and tricks and totally ignore the fact that you have to look at your own foundation, you have to look at your own beliefs, your own way of approaching things, your own skill set, your own toolbox, and just totally ignore that. Just try to find that like one little magical thing that's gonna get you to that dream job and dream life you want. It's gonna completely transform your life. Even though you haven't bothered to look at yourself and ask why am I not getting the results that I am and, and try to see what more foundational principle or, or mindset shifts you need to make. You know, these are all amazing ways to fail in engineering. Maybe not necessarily fail, but these are very good ways to just be mediocre. Now, how to prevent that from happening is very easy. One, choose a major you like. Two, if you don't like your major, don't be afraid to switch something else. If you end up wasting a semester or a year, it's not the end of the world. It's, there's no such thing as song cost. That, that was an investment in you figuring out what you want to do for the rest of your life. Life is not a race. I'd much rather sacrifice one year now than sacrifice 50 years doing something I don't like. Three, do not wait until graduation. Think about internships and jobs. You should ideally think about that as early as your freshman year. You should ask yourself, what kind of job do I want? And if I don't know, how should I find out? Who should I shadow? Who should I ask? These are things you should be doing. Four, approach people. People are nice. Most people are nice and most people are just as vulnerable as you in this engineering environment where they're also lost and they're also confused and they also want people to study with. So don't be afraid to approach people and reach out and say, hey, do you want to work together on this homework assignment? Do you want to work together on this lab? Do you want to work together on this thing? Hey, do you want to come to this event? Do you know of any events? Use people to your advantage. People are there to help you and you are there to help other people as well. And if you believe that you're introverted, I challenge you to think that, yes, you are probably more introverted on the spectrum of introversion to extroversion, but that's a belief that's not serving you. What is a better belief to adopt is, okay, I am more introverted, but um, I would like to talk to people and I would like to get these things. So I'm gonna get myself to just try a little bit to be more extroverted. And I know this from experience, but in the past years and a half, I've been by myself in a basement. So I've been like an extreme introvert. And now for me, it's a skill that I can just, based on what I want, the moment you realize it's the spectrum, it's not a binary thing, like that just makes life a lot easier. Five, if you want to succeed in engineering, um, think for yourself, if a lecture is not giving you value and attendance is not required, don't go. You're paying for college. You kind of get to decide your own rules as long as it's in com within, within compliance of the university rules. Figure out how to learn things on your own and, and find other ways to learn things if the lecture is not the best way to learn. Six, do not focus only on grades. Grades are important, but try to build real world experience. I graduated with a 3.6 and what was amazing is from the first semester I was in college or first year I was in college, I told myself, I'm not gonna give up 4.0. I'm gonna be a 3.5 guy and I'm just gonna use that extra time and energy to go look for projects and, and build real world skills. And that is the best decision I, was, I could ever make. Ideally, you have both a 4.0 and you have a lot of experience. All right, seventh way to succeed is please engage in outside activities, experiences, clubs, uh, try to join things, try to build things with other people. That's the, really the only way you learn. For me, the best thing I could have done was sign up for, there's a club in my university that was a group of students building CubeSat. Initially, I was doing like little circuit board designs, then I was doing like some mechanical structures, then I built like a little LED array, then I was working with a communication system. And I spent basically a year and a half outside of class in this little lab that taught me everything. And that helped me get my first internship and second and third and, and so on. And that really just helped me take off. And had I just only stick to what I knew from my class, I probably would not even be making these videos right now. Eight, please do not blame professors, and especially professor accents. I mean, if your professor is not doing a good job, call them out, send them an email saying, hey, um, could you help me with this? Or could you, or, or like, could you cover this topic a bit more? And hopefully you could try to engage them a bit more, but there's just no value in complaining about someone's accent. I, I know students do it all the time. I used to do it myself, but it's just, uh, it's just like, it's, it's really not gonna help you. It's just time and energy wasted. Just move on and figure out other ways to learn. If, if that means you have to learn things on your own, guess what? That's a good skill to have because that's what the real world is. Because once you leave college, no one's gonna teach you anything. I mean, you could ask, but like you're on your own. You have to navigate things on your own. You have to learn on your own. So use that as an advantage, not a disadvantage if you find yourself in that situation. Nine, uh, please do not ignore or hobbies or anything outside of engineering. You're still a human and you still need to creatively 
express yourself. If you can do that through engineering, that's fine. If engineering is the only thing you want to do, that's fine as well. But I find that for me, a lot of my recent research papers and a lot of my best work was an inspiration of something else, like either a music, um, a song I'm listening to, or like, I don't know, I, I usually travel a lot. And during a lot of my trips, I usually have like a lot of realizations that help me make better career decisions and engineering decisions. So like still try to have a life and try to do other things and try to get inputs from other people. Don't just block off non-technical people. Like have friends from liberal arts, ideally. Have friends who are artistic, who do not know anything about engineering, have people who are good at writing. Just try to be a bit more well-rounded because yes, engineering, means you should be good at math and physics and technical skills and problem solving. But at the end of the day, you're still working with people and you still need inspiration from other people. And 10, if you really want to succeed, do not focus on tactics, focus on principles and focus on mindset. The thing that helped me the most, the biggest return on investment I've ever had was just me questioning my own beliefs, what I think is true about myself, what I think is true about the world and tell myself things don't have to be that way. And just constantly challenging why I think something is the case. And just having this constant internal dialogue that helped me develop like a very good self-awareness, which I think is the single most important thing. In fact, I made a whole video about why that is extremely important and you can watch it over here.